Hey there, welcome to episode 272 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is Super 7's G.I. Joe Reaction Figures Wave 6, which it's hard to believe we're up to six waves of these figures already. In fact, Wave 7 just came out. I have it pre-ordered. Um, I'll probably have that in hand within the month or so, so I figured I'd better get Wave 6 reviewed before they show up. So I've, I've had some of these figures for a while, but the reason that I held off on reviewing them is because there was two figures in the Wave that I couldn't get immediately, and I kind of had to wait on those a little bit. So before I get into the figures, I just want to quickly acknowledge again, if this is perhaps your first video of mine, I don't normally record in this white abyss. This is my toy room. Usually it's full of shelves and toys and there's toy packaging, like blister cards up on the walls and everything. It's usually much more interesting to look at. But I am in the process of doing some kind of minor renos here. I'm gonna be doing some painting and replacing some shelving and getting some new chairs and all kinds of stuff. And it's been a bit of a slow process. So that's why it looks the way it does. But hopefully the next time you tune in for a video, it'll start looking a little bit more interesting in here. Anyway, so wave six. Um, this wave is a wave that, unless you're like a really hardcore collector, you could probably skip, to be honest with you. Because for one, I know a lot of people don't even like these reaction figures. Um, they, have a, they have a fan base, obviously, but there's a lot of G.I. Joe collectors that don't want anything to do with these reaction figures. Every time I post one of these videos, I always get comments from people saying, who would want these? Why does anybody you know, collect these? And fair enough, I get it. You know, you don't have to com comment about that. You know, I always appreciate your comments, but it is getting a little tiring hearing people say, well, these suck. And then I have to explain, I understand they're not your cup of tea, but some people like them. Because G.I. Joe reaction figures are, they have five points of articulation. They are based on the old Kenner Star Wars style figure. So their heads turn, their arms move up and down, and their legs move forward and backwards. They can't do the splits. They don't bend their elbows. They don't bend their knees. You know, they don't swivel at the waist. And, you know, back in the 80s when G.I. Joe first came out, they were like revolutionary compared to the Kenner Star Wars figures because they could do all of those things. And, you know, a lot of articulation is kind of one of the hallmarks of G.I. Joe figures. So a lot of collectors have a hard time understanding you know, why there's interest in G.I. Joe's that are less articulated. For me, and if you're watching this, you probably get it as well. It's the aesthetic. You know, I, I'm i kind of nostalgic for the five points of articulation figure. And not only that, these figures, because their articulation is so limited, they really capture the look of the characters from the cartoons so much better than any prior figures ever have. And Super 7 is also making cartoon accurate Ultimates figures, which are you know, like seven inch highly articulated figures. And those are cool too, but they're way more expensive to collect. And I actually think they're less accurate to the cartoons than even the reaction figures are. So I really like these things. But the reason why I say some people might skip this wave is it is entirely um, repainted characters. There's no new characters in this wave at all. So, uh, you know, I've already got, I don't know how many Cobra Commanders, like four or five different Cobra Commanders in different colors, a couple of different Snake Eyes, a couple of different Dukes, and we're getting all those characters again in this wave. So, yeah, some people might pass on it, but if you're like me and you're kind of a completist and you like repaints, then, yeah, you might really dig this wave. So, G.I. Joe, the original line back in the 80s, there was lots of sub-teams. Um, so, for example, one of the biggest and I think one of the earliest for G.I. Joe was Tiger Force. And that was basically supposed to be like a small strike team of Joes. And so they took characters that were already released and they painted them in tiger colors, although that's debatable. Some guys were like green with yellow stripes. Some guys were brown with black stripes. You know, there wasn't like anybody that was orange with black stripes. But regardless, stripes was the motif. And it was really just an excuse for Hasbro to re-release characters from a couple of years ago that maybe some kids had missed out on, and now they were painted in new colors, and it was nice and cheap for Hasbro to produce these things. Um, and then Cobra, on the Cobra side of things, they had a sub-team called Python Patrol, 
which was a lot of grays and reds and, and yellows and a checker pattern that I guess was supposed to be kind of like snake scales or something. And again, I just repainted a bunch of previously released characters like the Crimson Guard or the Cobra Trooper. Um, so anyway, those subteams are kind of baked right into G.I. Joe. And even in the present, uh, like the current G.I. Joe classified six inch line, um, they've been starting to re-release a lot of those characters repainted in Tiger Force and Python Patrol colors. However, in classified, they tend to be sticking to characters that were Tiger Force characters in the vintage line. So characters like Rakondo and Dusty and Duke and Flint. These are all based on previously established Tiger Force characters. So the new action figures basically look like the action figures you had as a kid. I like that Super 7 took some weird and wild choices with this collection. So for starters, why don't we dive into it? So the first character we've got here is Duke. So we all know Duke, he's like the G.I. Joe Field Commander. And Duke was part of the original Tiger Force back in the 80s. And this looks just like that figure. Like he had the green pants, he had the brown shirt. Now, interestingly enough, I think it was probably an error, but Duke in the Vintage line had brown hair when he was Tiger Force, which was weird because everybody knows Duke is blonde. Um, I'm glad that Super 7 didn't paint his hair brown, even though like some people might have preferred that because it's a more true homage to the original toy. I like that they kind of corrected the error, in my opinion, and gave him his blonde hair. And again, you can see just how accurate he is to the cartoon. He just looks really great. Now, I am going to open these guys up, and I'm going to do a close-up so you'll see them outside of the packaging uh, a little bit later in the video. So for now, I just kind of really want to show you the card art. You know, I really like the card art on these reaction figures. It's not as good as the artwork on the vintage uh, G.I. Joe cards. But, uh, yeah, it's still pretty cool, and it's very, you know, evocative of those old vintage cards. So it's, it's done in that style. And on the back, you get a, a file card, just like you did back in the old days. There's a shot of Duke right out of the cartoon there. Now, I think they've, like, altered the colors manually, because I don't think Duke ever wore a brown shirt in the actual cartoon. But they've taken a still shot from the cartoon and kind of tweaked it so the colors match the action figure. And you'll also notice on the back of the package, there's a cross promotion for all the figures in this wave. So there are 10 figures, five Joes, five Cobras. Now, interestingly enough, if you order these figures from Super, 7 web, Super 7's website, or if you're like me and you ordered them from Big Bad Toy Store, you could only order eight of these figures. The other two were exclusives, and those were the two that were a little bit harder for me to get. And that's what kind of delayed the release of this video. So anyway, there's Duke based on a vintage figure. Um, none of the other characters here, none of the other nine characters are based on previously established Tiger Force or Python Patrol characters. These are new ideas. And I think that's super cool. It, like As much as I like, and I'd be happy, and I, I assume they will give us Tiger Force Flint and Tiger Force Roadblock and all those established characters, but I really like that Super 7 takes some weird chances and they give us characters from the cartoon who had never had figures before, like the Blind Woodsman or like the uh, Wind Up Snow Serpent Clown thing, like weird, weird characters that they're giving us. So these aren't necessarily weird characters, but they're, it's an interesting idea. So anyway, next up we have Scarlet. So Scarlet is a mainstay of G.I. Joe. She's, you know, she appeared in Wave 1 back in 1982. She was prominently featured in the cartoons and the comic books. But she was never a member of Tiger Force. And uh, here we go. They basically took the previously released figure and slapped some uh, Tiger Force colors on her. So you can see she's kind of brown and yellow. So she doesn't quite match up with Duke. But once you see all these guys together, you will see that there is some, you know, everybody has a little bit of brown or a little bit of green. It does kind of tie them all together uh, somewhat. So again, she's got original artwork there, which is it's decent. It's not as good as the old stuff, but it's still it's cool that they took the effort to make some original card art. Same thing on the uh, file card. You get a picture of Scarlet right from the cartoon, and she's got the Tiger Force outfit on, which she never wore in the cartoon, obviously, since she was not a member of Tiger Force in the old days. But again, very cool. So there's Scarlet. Next up, this one's kind of fun and kind of goofy. This is Snake Eyes. 
Again, Snake Eyes was never a member of Tiger Force. And he looks like he's in his pajamas here. It's a full yellow bodysuit with tiger stripes. And a little bit of green accents there. The artwork looks kind of funny. Like, Snake Eyes is, you know, he's mostly all black. But they have made Snake Eyes figures in blue and gray and brown. But yeah, we've never got a bright yellow Snake Eyes before. It does look kind of strange. But I kind of love it just because it is so goofy. And here on the back of the packaging, it's not a still shot from the cartoon. It's actually a still shot from the comic book. I recognize that image from one of the covers where Snake Eyes is kind of walking through a minefield. But that cover clearly had him in his typical black outfit. They recolored it here to give him the yellow tiger stripes. So again, kind of interesting. I haven't actually read the file cards on these figures to see if they maybe expand on how these characters joined Tiger Force. At a glance, I don't think they do. But um, anyway, so that's Snake Eyes, so that's pretty cool. Now this one's kind of an interesting choice. So this is the G.I. Joe generic trooper, or a green shirt, some people refer to them. Now, there was really no generic troopers in G.I. Joe in the vintage toy line. That didn't really start until kind of the like 2000s when they started re-releasing G.I. Joe. They kind of brought in that idea that G.I. Joe would be supported by all these generic troopers. Now, the generic troopers did appear in the vintage cartoon, but they were never in the toy lines. Anyway, so Super 7, right from Wave 1, has been given us some of these generic G.I. Joe troopers. They gave us the troopers, and then they gave us the uh, Navy sailors, and then they gave us the, I think, technicians... Um, and uh, then the MPs. So they've been giving us lots of nameless generic characters. So what they've done here is they've taken the G.I. Joe Trooper, the green shirt, and they painted him in Tiger Force colors. So you can see he's got brown pants with yellow tiger stripes, a green shirt, and yeah, so not particularly tigery, but he matches the other Tiger Force guys like uh, Duke and stuff there. So I'm sure they'll all look good together. Now just interesting to note, as of now, this is the only Tiger Force G.I. Joe Trooper you can get. In the past, Super 7, whenever they put out a generic trooper, they put out a whole bunch of different variations. So you could get a guy like with goggles, without goggles, a guy with a mustache, a guy with a beard. You could get guys with different skin tones, so a white guy, and a black guy, and a Latino guy. This here is the only version. Now, that's not to say they won't release other versions later. But this guy appears to have a pretty dark complexion. So I don't know if he's African-American or maybe he's, you know, Latino or something. But uh, yeah, dark complexion and goggles are part of the sculpt. So anyway, we'll take a closer look at him in a minute. So those were the four regular release G.I. Joes that you can get at retail, that you can get online at various retailers. The last G.I. Joe character is Shipwreck. And he was a Target exclusive. Now here in Canada, we don't have any targets. Now sometimes target exclusives show up at Toys R Us, which we still have in Canada, but at least locally, my Toys R Us, they never get reaction figure exclusives. They tend to get exclusives of, you know, G.I. Joe Classified and maybe Star Wars Black Series or something. But these reaction figures, since we don't have targets, and Toys R Us doesn't get them, my only option probably would have been eBay. But fortunately, I have a brother, my brother Brian, who lives in Miami, and he looks out for me. So when there's a new Target exclusive figure, I usually give him a heads up, and he usually tracks it down for me. So he picked up this figure for me a while ago, pretty much whenever it came out. But he's in Miami, and he was coming home uh, this summer for my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And so I had to wait for him to come home, because he was just going to bring it with him in a suitcase. He was here for the, uh, the party the other week. It's been like two weeks now, I think. But uh, anyway, so he brought me Tiger Force Shipwreck. So there you go. Now, Shipwreck technically wasn't in Tiger Force in the vintage G.I. Joe line. But in there was like a foreign release. I forget where, like Argentina or something, where they did release a uh, Tiger Force Shipwreck in these colors. With the yellow shirt with the stripes and the black pants. So this is kind of a cool little nod to that foreign uh, shipwreck. So, pretty cool. This is just a repaint of the shipwreck that has been previously released. He's got the same little uh, kind of hook or anchor accessory 
Interestingly, he doesn't have Polly, his parrot. So I'm not sure why they chose to leave Polly out of there, but uh, and he also doesn't look like he has doesn't look like he has a gun this time. The previous version had a gun. So anyway, that's shipwreck, so that's pretty cool. So thank you, Brian, for picking that up for me. And now on to the Cobras. So we have first up we'll take a look at the Python Patrol Bat or Battle Android Trooper. So there was no Python Patrol Bat in the vintage line. There was no Python Patrol Bat in the like mid 2000s line, the uh, new sculpt era, we call them. Um, but there was a Python Patrol Bat in the G.I. Joe Classified line that came out just a month or two before this figure. So I don't know if Super 7 knew that was happening. I assume there must have been some sort of collaboration maybe because the figure appears to be basically the same colors as the G.I. Joe Classified one, which would be pretty, uh, kind of a crazy coincidence if two companies decided to come up with this and they just came up with their own design. So I assume Hasbro must have tipped them off that this is how a Python Patrol Battle Android Trooper would look. So again, this is just a repaint of the previously released Battle Android Trooper, but he's got, you know, the Python Patrol colors, some original artwork there on the back. We've got a shot of the bat from the cartoon again he's like manually altered to give him the python patrol colors because he never appeared that way in the cartoons or the comic books but uh, yeah it's pretty cool and that reminds me i didn't really take a look at shipwreck what did he have on the back so yeah that's a shot looks like from the comic book and uh yeah he's again they colored him in the shipwreck in the uh, tiger force colors which he never would have worn in the comic book or actually that might be a shot from the cartoon now that i look at it and the G.I. Joe Trooper as well. I don't know if I showed you, but yeah, that is a uh, a still image from the cartoon, but they changed him to be in his Tiger Force colors. Okay, back to Cobra. So the Baroness. She has never been a member of Python Patrol. Now, she has had an outfit very similar to this, just without the checker pattern, but uh, yeah, they've kind of... Uh, I don't know if they based this on the previously released figure. Uh, I think it was her look from Resolute, perhaps. Um, so it's very similar in design, but they've given it the kind of Python Patrol checkers on the arms. And she's got some original artwork there. Back of the packaging. Again, they've kind of just added that outfit onto her on a still image from the cartoon. So that's not how it appeared on screen. I know I sound like a broken record here now, but uh, I assume that's going to be the same for pretty much all these figures. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Destro. Now this one... I don't know if Snake Eyes or Destro are more, like, gaudy looking. But, uh, again, I kind of love how awful and, like, loud these figures are. So there's Destro with a yellow and red checkered shirt and green and yellow checkered pants. Uh, it is a pretty wild looking design. And, yeah, Destro has definitely never worn this before. Never been a member of Python Patrol. But, uh, yeah. They've got some artwork on the front. They've got a shot of him from the cartoon in the Python Patrol repainted colors there. And yeah, I think this guy is really cool. Although at a glance, I noticed the checker doesn't seem to come all the way down to his belt, which is kind of weird. Um, so yeah, I don't love that, but we'll get a better look at that once I open him out of the packaging here. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, then we have Cobra Commander, of course. Now, he has never been a member of Python Patrol himself, but here we, here he is with a fully checkered gray outfit, yellow helmet, yellow gloves. So again, a pretty wild design, unlike anything we've seen before. And for me, that makes this kind of fun. Like, I didn't need another blue repaint of Cobra Commander. You know, this is the kind of goofy stuff that I enjoy. So, pretty cool. Shot of him from the cartoon on the back. Which is bizarre, because now I'm thinking, like, I think every shot on the file cards were from the cartoon, except for Snake Eyes, which was from the comic book. So I don't know why they went with the comic book image. But anyway, so there's Cobra Commander. And then the last figure. So this guy here was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So you had to be at the San Diego Comic-Con to get this guy. And then uh, what other whatever figures they didn't sell at the con, they had available on their Super 7 website. So I was able to order this guy. Uh, after the fact, and he's the probably the last figure I got from this wave. Anyway, so here he is. So this is the Cobra Trooper. 
and there was a Python Patrol Cobra Trooper in the Vintage line. So this is the only Cobra character here that kind of carries on a tradition from the Vintage 80s toy line. And again, he looks pretty great. And you might be noticing that the colors, just like with Tiger Force, the colors are a little inconsistent with Python Patrol. Nobody has the exact same color scheme. You know, they've all got the checks. There's some yellows and there's some grays, but you know, it's not consistent across the board. Now, I don't know why they went that route back in the original toy line, um, but that's what they did. And so, yeah, let's carry it forward here. And again, there is a shot of a Cobra Trooper right from the cartoon. Uh, and he's got the Python Patrol colors added on. So I think that's it. We've seen all the figures in the packaging. And like I said, I've had some of these figures for, I don't know, more than a month now. And I wanted to shoot the footage where you guys could see them in packaging. So it's been kind of killing me. I hate getting new toys and not being able to open them. So I can finally open these figures. I'll show you them close up. And uh, yeah, and that'll be it. So first up, here's Duke outside of the packaging. So since this is the first figure we're looking at, I will just quickly go over the articulation. I won't bother talking about it on anybody else. But all of these figures, their heads turn side to side. Not a whole lot. They don't do the full 360. Maybe they would, but I'd be worried I'd either break them or scrape some paint. Um, and their arms, they do go 360 forward, backwards. And then their legs, they kick out forward. Um, they don't really move back though. So that's it for articulation. So otherwise, we're pretty much just looking at the sculpt and the paintwork. And as I said earlier, I really love the look of these guys. I think this Duke looks better than any of the other Dukes that we've got in the uh, three and three quarter or four inch scale. At least, you know, as far as his face goes. Um, you know, I, I really like the look of the classified figure and arguably maybe the Super 7 Ultimates figure um, does a better job of capturing the cartoon. I don't know, but uh, I just really like the look of this face. And uh, yeah, you can see his outfit. Now, when I was talking with this guy earlier, I said that he has the same colors as the vintage Tiger Force Duke, which when I was editing, I realized that was wrong. So you probably saw me splice in some footage of the original Duke. I'm not sure why they decided to like change the colors of his outfit, but uh, this looks good regardless and still pretty true to the Tiger Force colors. As for how he differs from the previous Duke, so... You know, it's the same figure, just slightly different paint. They both look good. Obviously, the version one Duke is the kind of more iconic version. That's how he appeared in the uh, the cartoons and everything. But uh, I'm just a big fan of these sub teams. I think it's kind of cool to have a cohesive little unit with, you know, matching or close to matching outfits. So yeah, I think this Duke is pretty awesome. Oh, one more thing before I move on. Um, a lot of the figures in the earlier waves had these like laser rifles, which were the guns that most characters carried in the cartoon, and they shot like red and blue lasers. This figure, he comes with a machine gun, which is more true to uh, the gun that the actual vintage 1983 Duke figure came with. So that's kind of an interesting change there. Anyway, on to the next figure. So next up, we've got Scarlet. Again, a really nice sculpt. Really nice paint job on this figure. I do have a couple of complaints with this one. And it's the same complaints I've had with this Scarlet with the previous releases. She's got two accessories, neither of which she can hold very well. So she comes with this quiver of arrows, which is kind of an interesting choice because the original vintage figure didn't come with a quiver like this. And I don't think she carried one in the cartoons or anything. So I'm not really sure why they gave it to her. Now, mind you, she does use this kind of like little crossbow. So I guess it makes sense that she would have a, you know, some arrows, but these reaction figures are usually pretty skimpy on accessories. So I don't know why they would go out of their way to give us some accessories that aren't normally associated with her. And, you know, they could maybe stay over her shoulder, I guess is how you're supposed to display them, but they don't really stay in place. She can kind of hold on to them. Like they can rest in her hand, but not very well. So these things are pretty much going in my like spare parts bin, never to be seen again. And even her crossbow, as you can see, she's got a very loose grip. So it doesn't really stay in place there. It's, you know, it's very kind of loose. And it's the same with both hands. 
So again, I probably won't even display her with this just because I don't want to be constantly picking it up off of the, uh, the shelf. So she'll probably just go like this. And yeah, she looks really good. Like that's a really clean paint job on the face. Look, look at those eyelashes. You know, there's no smudging or anything. Her lips, her eyebrows, it's all really crisp. Looks really good. Uh, she's got her ponytail, which is really nice because like the vintage figures from the 80s, you know, she basically just had short hair that ended there. But in the cartoon, she, always, she was always portrayed with long hair. And I think it was a limitation of the figures at the time that Hasbro didn't really know how to give her hair and still be able to turn her head. So I, I really like this look here with the longer hair, it looks good. But my other complaint about this figure is because she has heels, um, she does not stand up very well. You kind of have to lean her awkwardly forward. So you see she's got this little bit of a kind of a hunch. And even then it's not like a super strong stance. Now at least she does have holes in her feet so you could get a display stand for her. It would have been nice if Super 7 just provided you with stands. I really think that all companies should be providing stands with their action figures these days. Um, but whatever. So, But yeah, I find some of these reaction figures, they really topple over easily, which is a shame because they're such nice little figures to display. It'd be nice to get like kind of a little step display where you could display a row of them and a row of them and a row of them but if they're constantly falling over they would just go down like dominoes which is kind of annoying now i will bring in my other scarlets here and hopefully they stand up so this is the original scarlet we got a little bit of the same problem so i have to hunch her forward too so you can see it's the same figure they have changed her hair color made it a little bit darker and then i also have this version which is the glow in the dark scarlet her hair color is probably closer to the original one. So yeah, this one here, they went with a redder and less orange paint. Not sure why. But yeah, these are all pretty cool figures. I'm pretty pleased with this new one. And next up, we've got Snake Eyes. Now this is the version two Snake Eyes. So the first Snake Eyes that they made in the reaction figure line was the version one Commando version which is the Snake Eyes with the goggles. He looks kind of like he's wearing paintball gear or something. Um, so we've gotten that Snake Eyes repainted, I think four or five times. There's a glow in the dark one. There's actually two glow in the dark ones. Um, there's a solid black one, there's a blue one. But when it comes to this version two or the ninja version with the visor, I think this is only the second one that we have. So the first one is here. Now, it might be semantics. They have actually released a version of him with the visor where he's in disguise as a Cobra Sneakling. But uh, just counting that one, I think this is the only kind of standard ninja we have. I don't think they've released this one in solid black yet. I'm sure they will if they haven't. But here he's got that kind of cartoony blue color. And it's a cool figure. I prefer the Commando version, but whatever. Anyway, this guy's a repaint of this guy. So I now have two. And I'm sure there will be many more before Super 7 stops making these things. So he looks good in these colors. He looks silly. Um, you know, it looks like pajamas to me. But uh, anyway, it's kind of fun. Now, one thing to note is he does have his sword, which is sheathed on his back. But he does not have a gun besides. The previous version came with this little pistol. Uh, but this guy decided to just give him his sword. So I'm not sure why they decided to skimp out on the accessories because they already had the gun available. But they did. But uh, otherwise, yeah, he's a pretty cool figure. I like him. Next up, we've got the G.I. Joe Trooper. So we'll take a closer look at him. So he's got this kind of gold paint on his goggles, which looks pretty cool. Although I don't know why they didn't maybe just go with yellow to tie into the Tiger Force theme a little bit. But otherwise, he's got the, the greens and the browns. He's got some yellow tiger stripes down the sides of his pants. So not particularly stripey, but a cool figure nonetheless. It almost looks like his helmet should come off, but it doesn't. It is just part of the sculpt. But you can see his eyes underneath those goggles there. Anyway, he's a cool little figure. So he's got like a machine gun there. 
Now, as I mentioned in the uh, the first part of this video, they've been making these like kind of nameless troopers in every wave of uh, the reaction figure G.I. Joe line thus far. So in wave one, we got the standard green shirt. And the variations they released with this guy was just three different skin tones. So uh, like you can see here, I've got the same figure. He's identical, just different skin tones. Now I got the same figure again when they released the glow in the dark. The, uh, I think they called them Glow Force. So uh, that was a San Diego exclusive last year. So I've got that. Now you'll notice none of these guys have goggles. However, I think it was wave maybe three or four of the G.I. Joe reaction figures that they released some more G.I. Joe troopers and they were all in camouflage like this. And you can see the body is the same base body with those kind of like suspender straps and you know everything else is the same. But they had some new head sculpts. Some of them had goggles on top of the helmet. Some of them had goggles over top of their eyes. Some of them had beards. Some didn't. Some had different skin tones. Now, just for the sake of saving some money, I decided to just buy one of the camouflage troopers. You know, I think there was probably six to nine different variations, and it just gets expensive. These figures are anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks here in Canada, which as much as I love them, I really don't think they're worth that much. And uh, that's a big ask, especially for a lot of nameless troopers. So maybe if I ever find some more of these camo guys on sale, maybe I'll buy some of the guys with goggles or without beards and all that sort of stuff. But for now, this is the only one. So anyway, this head that you're seeing, whoops, this head that you're seeing here, this is reused from this wave of figures when they had some guys with the goggles uh, over their eyes. So yeah, pretty cool addition to my G.I. Joe army. It's pretty cool to continue to grow these uh, nameless troopers. So G.I. Joe has a, a solid support staff to back them up. So the last of the G.I. Joes is Shipwreck. And this is the one that was a Target exclusive. And it is a nice little figure. I like that uh, kind of expression on his face. I like the black hat, that looks good. Uh, yeah, he's got the tattoo on his forearm there. And yeah, he's got this real real rope attached to his hook. And yeah, he's pretty cool. I like this guy a lot. Now here is the Wave 1 Shipwreck. Now he is also pretty cool. I was pretty pleased with this figure. Although like the Snake Eyes, I'm kind of left to wonder about why they decided to kind of cheap out on these a little bit. In that uh, this time around, all he has is the hook. That's the only accessory. But this version here, he had the hook with rope, which I have all coiled up there around his hand. He also came with his little like flintstock pistol there. And he comes with his parrot, Polly, that perches on his shoulder. And we actually, there was another version of Shipwreck also in Cobra Disguise that I forgot to bring out here. But he also came with Polly. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure why this one doesn't. It seems like kind of a glaring omission. But... Uh, yeah, also, as I said before, there was no actual Tiger IV shipwreck in the American toy line of the 80s. Um, it was a foreign release from Brazil. Now, in the modern G.I. Joe line, or what we call the modern line, the 4-inch line that ran from 2007 up to about uh, 2019 or so, they did do a Tiger IV shipwreck that had the same outfit as this. So it was kind of an homage, again, to that Brazilian uh, G.I. Joe figure. Now, normally I would have dragged that uh, that shipwreck figure out here for a comparison, but because I'm in the process of packing things up while I paint and renovate this room, I don't have easy access to a lot of my figures right now. So no comparisons, other than I guess I could throw a picture, of just an image in here of the, uh, the figure from the 2000s. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is cool. This is a, a nice addition to the Tiger Force team. Not an obvious choice, but I hope that we continue to get more Tiger Force characters in the future. So now let's take a look at the Cobra characters in their Python Patrol colors. So first up, we have the Cobra Battle Android Trooper, or the Bat, and he looks pretty cool. I really like the design of the Cobra Bat. I think he looks great in the reaction figure format. The figure back in the 80s had a lenticular sticker, so it kind of looked like you could see the insides of the figure. Now, they've handled it different ways 
in the many different Bats figures they've released since that original back in 85 or 86. But uh, I really like what they've done here. They've got a uh, the sculpted insides and then they've got kind of a translucent plate that looks like glass over the top. So yeah, that's really cool. Python pants, maroon top. So yeah, this is consistent with the classified figure that came out recently. And again, I would normally grab him for a quick comparison, but he's uh, packed away right now. But when the first bat figure came out in the reaction figures, I was really impressed because as I've been saying, they don't come with a lot of accessories typically, but the bat has multiple hand replacements. So he's got the claw and he's got the like flamethrower and he's got, I don't know, a drill or a grenade launcher or something. And you can pop his hands out and replace them with the, uh, the other gear. Now I don't think it's too difficult. I haven't actually removed this guy's hands yet. So bear with me. Hopefully I didn't, I think I might've just broke that. So that sucks if I did that. I did break it because now that one won't go in. Well, there you go. You get to see a live breaking. I was really hoping that wasn't gonna happen. But uh, anyway, I might have to glue that in place now. So that, that really does suck. But uh, anyway, so there you go, the bat. He's got a little holster for his little pistol. And I guess I should bring out the other bat for comparison. So here he is. You can see very similar in, uh, well, the exact same in sculpt, just a little bit of different paint job. And it is noteworthy that this guy came with an extra large rifle as well. Now, uh, I'm not, not sure why they didn't give uh, this Python Patrol version a rifle. Not that he needs it. I figure he's already got all these weapon attachment hands and a pistol is sufficient. I don't really need all my characters to have two guns in their hand. It seems a little busy anyway, but I guess it is just noteworthy that they didn't give it to him. So anyway, there you go. Python Patrol bat. Very cool. Very bummed right now that I broke him. I really have to learn not to try and do things like that on camera because I could definitely feel there was some resistance and maybe I should have taken a hairdryer to it or something before I attempted that. But uh, anyway, that sucks. But that's on me, really. Anyway, there you go, Cobra Bat. So next up, we've got the Baroness. Now this is a really nice looking figure. I like the red translucent lenses on her glasses. I think that looks really good. I like this outfit, which has got kind of this, uh, I don't know, gray, um, like leotard underneath within the kind of the black, like corset armor, and then the uh, thigh high boots. So yeah, it's a cool look, nice looking figure, big red gun. Now my only concern with this one is she also has high heels like Scarlet, and it is a little difficult to get her to stand properly. So you do have to kind of give her, you can see I've got her in a bit of a hunch again. And also the large gun kind of helps pull her forward. But if I were to stand her completely upright, um, she doesn't want to stand. So you gotta give her a little bit of a hunch, which is kind of annoying. Now this is a repaint of a figure that we got a couple of waves ago. Now you can see this is her more basic look based on the original toy. So she's got the all black outfit with the black frame sunglasses and the clear lenses. So this was a really nice figure. The first time it came out, uh, it looks good in both versions. Of all these Python Patrol figures, this is one that I think would actually be you know, sufficient. Like if you missed this figure in your collection, you could buy this and it would just be a good stand-in for Baroness, as opposed to say the Cobra Commander and the Destro that I'm about to show you, which look kind of ridiculous in their outfits. Now, uh, these are not the first Baronesses. The first Baroness we got was this one which was based more on her uh, look in the original comic book, I would say, and maybe the early episodes of the cartoon. And we got that one repainted in the glow in the dark. So this is the first time that we saw the, uh, the red translucent lenses and they looked really good on this figure. So I'm glad to see them make an appearance on this new Python Patrol one. But yeah, she's pretty cool. I like it. Next up, we've got Destro. And as I said in my intro, like I love this figure, but I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's a completely 
ugly outfit. Like this is this is a bad color scheme, but that's part of its charm. I love things that are kind of uh, stupid sometimes. So it's still very clearly Destro. He's got that silver head, which almost looks like vac metal, but it is just a really nice chrome paint. It's actually really hard to photograph because it just reflects so well. And he's got his eyebrows painted right on there. Then he's bare chested with his medallion, the huge collar. Paint can be a little cleaner on there where the two pieces snap together. You can see some like yellow and some glue there, but not a big deal. And uh, yeah, my main gripe with this figure is the fact the pattern just stops there. I don't know what the logic to that is because that doesn't seem to be the case on any of the other characters. Not of the vintage Python Patrol, not in the like 2000s Python Patrol, and not in the reaction figures Python Patrol. I've never seen anybody's Python pattern just stop dead like that. And uh, I just, I really don't understand it. It just looks incomplete. You know, his pants, the pants have the pattern all the way up. Anyway, for accessories, he's got his little gun that he just dropped right over here. So it's just a little black pistol. He holds it okay, but the grip on a lot of these guys is pretty soft. And then the other accessory he has is this little rocket launcher which clips onto his wrist. And it's cool, I guess, that they include this, but I would have preferred this to just be part of the sculpt. I don't know why it's not. Because, like, you see on, uh, like, other figures, like, let's say, Snake Eyes here again. Snake Eyes has got a painted little pistol accessory, but... You know, it's not removable. It's just part of the sculpt. He's even got, I wasn't even thinking of this, but look, he's got a little arrow right there on his wrist. They painted it and everything. I assume that's something that he would launch at his enemies, but it doesn't come off, which is good. But this guy here, his little missiles as a separate piece, um, you know, they might have think they might have thought that was like adding value or something, but I just find these things just fall off because they don't clip on super well. And I feel the more they come on and off, the looser that gets because the plastic gets a little stretched and uh, they just tend to fall off. So I don't know why they didn't just make those part of the sculpt, the vintage toy. They were just part of the sculpt. So it's not like there's really a precedent for them to have to do that. Anyway, here is the uh, previously released Destro. So these are his more classic colors. And this is what I'm talking about, that unlike Baroness, if you missed out on this Destro and you get this one, I think you would probably still be on the hunt for this Destro or hope that they would make another release in the future, maybe with his gold helmet and his iron grenadier look or something. Because, yeah, this cannot be the only Destro you have in your collection. It might be even worse than the uh, the Pimp Daddy Destro that's a bit of a legendary figure that's got the like leopard print collar and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. It's silly looking, but it's awesome. Now here is the Cobra Commander. And this guy looks pretty great. Like Destro, this is a really ugly outfit. It's not as loud and clashing as Destro's, but I would say it's arguably just as stupid looking. I don't know. It maybe shouldn't be. It's, it's just black with a gray kind of scale pattern over it but i don't know maybe it's because it's the yellow gloves it looks like he's about to wash the dishes and then the yellow helmet and the little and the red shoes the whole thing just kind of ties together to be a really silly look but again i like silly so i think this figure is awesome i just would not want this to be my only cobra commander figure in my collection now fortunately it is far from the only cobra commander in my collection because i also have the original version that they released and then I have the, uh, I think this was version 2 in the darker colors, which is an homage to the uh, hooded version of Cobra Commander. Now that's what I'd actually really like to see is, rather than just give us this battle helmet painted over and over again, it would be nice to get the hooded version. But I've heard rumors that uh, maybe Hasbro doesn't want any more versions of the hooded Cobra Commander produced. Uh, I don't know. It seems silly to me, but... I also have him in the glow in the dark. So these figures are all the exact same. It's all Cobra Commander, just slightly different paint jobs. And technically I have a fifth version of this figure in another paint job here. This is the same figure painted in red. Although this was actually supposed to be a whole different character. This is Red Laser, 
This is an homage to an action figure that was only released in the UK back in the 80s. So, uh, yeah, and it's amazing just when they paint those eyes on there. It really changes the look of the character. You, you might not look at this figure and think it's Cobra Commander at all, but really it's the exact same figure as all of these other guys. And, uh, yeah, I love them all. I'll probably buy another dozen of these if they just keep making them. And lastly, I have the Python Patrol Cobra Trooper. So this guy is typically in the uh, standard Cobra Blue. They are sometimes known as Blue Shirts or the Cobra Infantry. And uh, yeah, they are just kind of an iconic look. I absolutely love the original Cobra Trooper. And uh, the original color scheme is basically perfect. You know, sometimes they have the red mask, sometimes it's black, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's pretty much just the dark blue and they look amazing. Now they have changed the color of these guys quite a few times and it usually looks pretty good. They changed it to gray for the stinger driver. They changed it to all black for like the uh, night force or night stalkers, whatever they were called. Um, this is not one of the better uses of the uh, sculpt here. Like, I don't know, the, I just don't like that shirt design, but it's not bad. Like, it's, uh, I don't think it's as, it's not as goofy fun as the Cobra Commander of the Destro is, um, and it's not as outright just cool as, uh, you know, the original Cobra Trooper, so it, it lands somewhere in the middle for me. Um, uh, it's just nice to always expand my Cobra Hermes, um, uh, for his gun, where's the he guy? He's got, like, a little machine gun there. They reuse these weapons a lot. They don't give us a whole lot of unique weapons in the vintage G.I. Joe line. You know, almost every character had their own unique weapon. But here we're getting a lot of reuse. So the Cobra Trooper first came out in, I think, Wave 1. And they gave us a whole bunch of different varieties. So there was three different skin tones with the white, the black, and the, what we'll call, I don't know, tan. And you also had a variation where you could get them with what they call a Y back and with an H back. So you could get each, each character with a color scheme and with the option for the backs. There were six different figures in total. I bought three of them, and then we got, let me see, I've got the glow-in-the-dark version here, and then I've got this kind of weird and wonderful camo, which is, to be honest, I think this one's even worse than, than the Python Patrol one. I think the Python Patrol looks better than this guy. This was an experiment that Super 7 tried, not based on any prior uh, figures or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a neat oddity, but doesn't look great. Anyway, this is an example of what the H-back looked like as opposed to the, uh, the Y-back, by the way. So there you go. I think that's, uh, well, that's just some of my variations of the Cobra Trooper. They've also released these guys with jetpacks, which I have. And I don't know, there might even be more variations that I'm forgetting right now. But yeah, this guy's pretty cool. Got the Y-back. Nice green boots. Yeah, not too shabby. Okay, so that was my review of Super 7's G.I. Joe Reaction Figures Wave 6, the Tiger Force and Python Patrol Wave. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me comments below, um, check out my prior videos. I've reviewed all the previous waves of G.I. Joe Reaction Figures. So if you're looking for any of them, I have a reaction figure playlist there that you can find all those. And stay tuned because uh, I will have Wave 7 before too long. So, uh, yeah, come back for that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.